Well, ahoy there. We are jumping into chapter two. Uh, this is all about inequalities. This, uh, for most of you, should be a bit of review, but we'll uh, take our time going through this stuff. So linear inequalities are basically like equations, except they have the alligator instead of the equal sign. Um, so equations generally will have one solution. Inequalities will have usually infinite solutions because it'll be anything that's greater than or anything that's less than a specific number. So here's some quick vocab that you'll see throughout the unit. So the first one, inequality. Anytime you have a little greater than, less than, the little alligator, that's an inequality. Solution to an inequality is the answer to make an inequality true. A solution set, sometimes, usually, there's actually more than one answer for an inequality. So it could be like, well, x could be 6, or x could be 6.2, or x could be 7, or 9, or whatever. So that is a solution set, is all of the numbers that work for an inequality. A graph of an inequality is basically, I believe we're just starting with a number line, and you'll have to fill in or have an open circle, and then you're going to shade your little arrow in one direction or the other. We're going to go over that. And then uh, expression is previous vocabulary. It's basically a number sentence without an equal sign. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the little launch into 2.1. And now here we go. So an inequality, anytime you see one of these little alligators, is what I like to call them, any of these little symbols, that is an inequality. Technically, if you have not equals to, that's also an inequality. So uh, the keywords you'll see for this little symbol right here is less than, fewer than, uh, this one is greater than or is more than. And when it has the line underneath, it also can be equal to. So it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If you have any questions on these, feel free to ask me during class. Let's jump into some examples, see how well you remember these things. So for A, uh, which of the following inequalities represents a number W minus 3.5 is less than or equal to negative two. All right, let's see how you did on that one. Oh, they're breaking it down for us. This is a great way to do it. So a number W minus 3.5 is W minus 3.5. Is less than or equal to is literally less than or equal to sign. And then negative two. There we go. All right, for B, um, three is less than a number N plus five, which of the following inequalities represents that. All right, so they're going to break it down again. Three is less than, which means you're going to have three and then a less than sign. And then the number n plus five is just n plus five. So there we go. And the third one, zero is greater than or equal to twice a number x plus one. Which of these inequalities represents that? Oh, we get another slide for this one. Here we go. So zero is greater than or equal to is the sign be greater than or equal to. It's got the line underneath because it can be greater than or equal to. And then twice the number X will be two X plus one. And there we go. All right. Hopefully you did well on those. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me during class. Now let's talk about what a solution of an inequality is. It's basically any number that you could plug in and it's true. So it's anything that makes the inequality true. Uh, an inequality can have more than one solution, and all of those solutions together are called the solution set. So the solution set is all the different possible things that make this thing true. Um, recall. Yeah. <laughs> A little force there. Recall of the diagonal line through an inequality means that it is not true. So if you see this little line through the greater than or less than, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, it means it's not greater than or equal, just like if it's through an equal sign, it's not equal to. So if we have this inequality, x plus five is greater than or equal to negative two. If you plug in negative six, you do negative six plus five is negative one. Oh, no, that's not less, that's that's actually less than or equal to. So, uh, oh wait, no, it's it's negative one, is it's greater than or equal to negative two. That one is, it is right, so this, that is true. If you plug in negative seven, you do that, plus five is negative two. That is greater than or equal to negative two because it's equal to negative two. So that one is also part of the solution set. If you plug in negative eight, however, negative eight plus five is negative three. 
That is not greater than or equal to negative two. Therefore, negative eight is not part of the solution set to this inequality. So that's just some terminology you'll be using. Uh, if you have any questions about that, again, ask me in class. All right, here's a couple of examples. So tell whether negative four is a solution first to this first inequality. So is negative four a solution to x plus eight is less than negative three? Okay, well, you could have guessed, but hopefully you tried it out. So if you plug in negative four for x, you do negative four plus eight, which is four. Is that less than negative three? No, no, it's not. Four is not less than negative three. Therefore, negative four is not a solution for the first inequality. Okay, what about the second one? Is negative four a solution to negative 4.5 times x is greater than negative 21? Well, let's find out. Okay, so you plug in negative four. Uh, this means to multiply when you have this coefficient next to a variable. Mouse. Okay, so a uh, negative four and a half times negative four is positive 18. Is that greater than negative 21? Well, yes, because every positive number is bigger than every negative number. Therefore, negative four is a solution to the second inequality. Okay. And then we also have to learn how to graph. Again, I believe you did this last year, but we'll review it. So anytime you graph an inequality, because you can have more than one answer, you're gonna show that on a number line by drawing in a darkened little arrow. Uh, I think we have that on the next slide here. Um, the trick is though, the open circle versus the closed circle. So you're gonna use an open circle on the number line when that number cannot be part of the solution set. And you're gonna fill in the circle, you're gonna use a closed circle when that number is part of the solution set. So I think we have this example here. So if you have two is less than X, then X can be anything bigger than two. Uh, I don't wanna actually play the, well, maybe I can do this without audio. Uh, oh boy, now it's talking to us. Let me just pause this here. Let's, let's back it up here. Um, all right, well, this uh, it's not exactly the examples I wanted to see here. Oh, here we go. All right, so here, if you're graphing y is less than or equal to negative three, it can equal negative three. So you're gonna put a closed circle on negative three, and then your arrow is gonna go which way, left or right? Okay, your arrow will go left because it can be anything less than or equal to negative three, which I think if I fast forward a little bit, where is it? Oh. Wait, wait, ooh, wait, oh boy, another, there we go. There is the uh, graph for this first inequality. Uh, for the second one, if you have a uh, two is less than X, we're gonna do an open circle on two. Oh, there it is. And the reason why it's an open circle is because X can't actually be two. Um, but it can be like 2.1 and 2.2. It can be really close to two, but it can't be two. So you show that by putting an open circle on two. And then if you're graphing this one, two is less than X, which way would the arrow go? Okay, if you said right, you're correct, because X can be anything bigger than two. So you're gonna make your arrow go this way and it's nice and big and dark. Let's fast forward to see that one. Oh, there it is, lovely. So this right here is the graph for X is bigger than two, or two is less than X. Okay, I think we have a couple examples for you to try on this one. So, oh, we just did these two examples. All right, well, let's do this third one. So X is greater than zero. Are you gonna use an open circle or a closed circle? If you said open circle, you're right. Um, and where would you put the circle? On zero, that is correct. So you're gonna have an open circle on zero. And then is the arrow gonna go to the right or the left? The arrow would go to the right because it can be anything bigger than zero. So you put it on zero, but an open circle because it can be really close to zero. It could be like 0 0.1, 0 0.005 even, but it can't be zero. So that's why you do the open circle on zero. All right, and we have some story problems. So here, the graphs show the height restrictions H in inches for two rides at an amusement park. Write an inequality that represents the height restriction of each ride. So for ride A, take a look at that graph. What is the inequality that represents the height restriction for ride A? Okay, let's see if this can click through and just give me A without showing me B, let's find out. 
Oh, there we go. All right. Uh-oh, it's going to show us B. All right, so let's get the answer right now. So what's the inequality for ride B? What is the inequality for ride B? Okay, let's go through the solutions. Um, so for ride A, H has to be greater than or equal to 48. The filled in circle means that it can be 48. And the arrow going to the right means it's also anything bigger than that. For ride B, H is less than 52. The open circle means it can't be 52. And then, but it can be anything less than that. So it can be like 51.9. It can be really close to 52, but not 52. And then the arrow goes that way because it's everything less than. Okay, if this was not review for you, if this was fairly new, you may have a lot of questions. Feel free to ask me in class while we're working through the assignments. And I will review this again briefly before you begin. Um, all right, good luck. I'll see you in class. Arr!